Hi, I'm JJ and this is another tutorial looking at scratch building a flush deck ship rig sloop using two of the Warlord Brig models. Known as a ship sloop in the Royal Navy as opposed to a brig sloop or a sloop of war in the US Navy or even a corvette in the French Navy, the ship rig sloop was a ship of around 20 guns and in the Royal Navy drew the boundary between a lieutenant commanding a brig and a suitable vessel for a newly promoted post captain. The sloop could be built flush decked as depicted with this model or a more traditional layout featuring a forecastle and quarter deck. Either way this handy vessel could operate in shallower waters than a larger frigate but have the robust qualities of a ship with three masts preferable to the two masted brig that could easily become unmanageable if it lost either mast in combat. This tutorial will show how to build a flush deck sloop from the hulls of two brigs and the materials you will need to complete the model. After building two hulls from a single brig sprue, you will need to saw them at different points to create the two long hull pieces needed to build the longer hull of the sloop. As you can see in the diagram, the forward and aft deck grids serve as easy reference points as to where to line up your modelling saw. And the video shows the first hull I cut aligned with the forward grid and I'm about to cut the second hull lined up on the aft one. Take your time getting the saw blade in the right position and aim to cut straight down using a regular sawing motion until the two halves separate. As you will see, patience is definitely required for this process and certainly if you're intending to video it for a video tutorial, my advice would be to mount the camera somewhere else other than on the table that you're actually cutting on. Still, as the saying goes, everything comes to he who waits. And as you can see, if you've managed to cut directly down, you should end up with two neatly adjoining ends that will uh, be very useful as we go further into the process. The next step is to take a modeling knife and as well as cleaning up any excess flash from the sawing process to remove the deck grid grill that is right in the center of the main deck and is where I'm intending to put in a base mounting for the new main mast. It's not too important to remove all the flash with the knife um, when you're cleaning up as you will find that a little bit of the flash will be quite useful when we actually come to gluing the two halves together uh, and will help in welding the two together. But as you can see here, if you've managed to cut straight down through the two hulls, you should end up with two short ends and two long ends, which should marry together quite nicely with the addition of some liquid poly. Additionally, you should also find that the position between the guns along the side of the hull are equally spaced by making the cuts in these two positions. And by taking a good amount of liquid cement when you position the two hulls together, you can really create a, uh, a, an excellent bond between the, the two halves that help to melt the plastic where it meets and help to disguise the join. And you can finish that off as you can see here with a little bit of extra poly on the end of the brush just to stroke away any of that flash as I mentioned earlier which uh, will help fill any gap and will most likely avoid you needing to use any mod model filler. Um, although that's obviously a, an option if you require. But as you can see here, I'm just using the flash from the two joins and stroking that with the liquid cement into the gap. And it just makes it even stronger, a stronger bond. And you will see that it's, uh, it's much neater when it's, uh, when it's finished in this way. In addition, you will also have two shorter half holes from the other brig model. And uh, in the same process, I'm putting these two halves together. Likewise, the guns you will find are fairly evenly spaced and the hull creates the potential to build a small brig 
a 12 14 gun brig or as I'm planning to look at maybe looking at doing um, a schooner model I haven't yet decided what I'm going to do with my uh, my baby brig hulls but um, there's nothing going to waste here and um, the, set, the process is the same uh, the welding process as you can see should produce a nice neatly joined smaller brig hull that uh, has lots of potential for those smaller ship models that you want to include in your, your collection. The next step is to cut the channels for the mainmast with plastic card, about eight millimeters in length and a millimeter wide, which will provide the mount for the mainmast shrouds and ratlins. Using the same thin plastic card, I cut three millimeter square base mounts for the mainmast and position them at the centre of the deck on the six sloop models I'm building. Following this, I take a mini drill and drill out the anchor points for the mainmast backstays, close to the channels and the hull steps. Now all we need to do is to build the new mainmast, which will be the taller of the three masts requiring an extra 1cm long piece of 1.5mm plasti rod fixed into the hull mount after drilling it with the hand drill. The other part of the main mast build is to take one of the foremasts from the other brig kit that supplied its hull for this model and carefully trim and file away its base mount before super gluing it to the extension piece. Once it's dry you can further strengthen the join by brushing it with the poly cement. The remodelled foremast comes with a furled mainsail which works perfectly on our new mainmast and the poly cement will help hide any visible line on the new mast as well. When I built this the first time I toyed with the idea of using a brass pin to secure the mast further but time has shown that the super glue method works perfectly and it makes a very strong mast, which is made even more secure once it's rigged. Once you have the new mast into position, it's then just a question of making sure that it's perfectly aligned and as straight as, uh, as possible, and then to marry it up with the other uh, mast sections, just loosely aligned so that you can just make sure that uh, once the other masts are set in position, uh, it, will, um, it will take its place amongst the other two and uh, look perfect. With the positioning of the mizzen mast, you can now see how this model sloop is starting to take shape. And with this process done, you can see that all that's required now is for the whole model to be primed and uh, off to the painting desk to prepare it for uh, having sails and rigging attached at a later stage. As you can see, this process quickly becomes a production line method and I have put together six models following the steps you've seen outlined here. They've also been primed and now ready to go to the paint desk and in a latter post I will show you what they look like once they're painted and fully rigged. For information on rigging these models, then I'd refer you to my three rigging tutorials where I take a look at standing and running rigging for the various nationalities. If you've enjoyed this video tutorial and would like to see how these models turn out once completed, I'll be posting to JJ's Wargames blog where you can also find out additional information of other models in the collection and other ideas I have about putting them together.